Hello. I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, it's a new week and God is doing amazing things in our lives. And this is one of the reasons I say to you today, relax, praise God, relax, trust in the Lord. The book of Proverbs, he told us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. Don't lean on it. It will not do the miracle. Praise God. But it says, in all your ways, rather, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. Praise God. As we go into this new week, I want to encourage you. Believe in God. He will make it good. Praise God. Don't let anything cause fear in your heart. Allow God to fulfill his word. He is the one that has spoken to you and he is the one that will bring it to pass. He has never given us the power to bring his word to pass. It is his word and he will bring it to pass. Praise God. Hey there. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Believe this with all your heart when you do. And God is going to supply all your needs. Are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we've been talking about the true light in our text is from John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. Take note of that. I am, he didn't say a light of the world, the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Now, anyone who follows Jesus, Jesus said that person will not walk in darkness. Rather than walking in darkness, he is going to have, meaning your walk with Jesus will give you the light of life. You know what that means? It means you will be able to see what you're doing with clear understanding, not just clear understanding, God's perspective of things. Now, I've been sharing with us all months about this, and we've looked at several aspects of the things that Jesus brought to light, because he says, I am the light of the world. It means if you are not following his word, you are simply walking in darkness. That's what it means. If your actions are not lining or not lined according to his word, it means your action is done in darkness. And think about it. If that action in done, is done in darkness, what does it mean? It means it will not stand. He tells us, except the Lord builds the house, the laborers work labor in vain. See, because they did not build according to God's light, their labor will be in vain. Now, what does it mean be in vain? It will be done, but it will be useless. That's simply what to, to do something in vain means. It will be done, but it's going to be useless. Now then, Jesus began to show us by his word everything that we need to know. Now, as we're rounding up this month, I want to share some thoughts to you that... that are very important. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In verse 31. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31, Jesus speaking. And I you remember, was it sometime two weeks ago I shared with you on how Take the words of Matthew. Now, all the Gospels, they are very important. But you see, when you study, there is such a thing as an eyewitness account. See, Matthew was an eyewitness account. So he's not saying what he was told Jesus said. 
he is saying what he heard from Jesus. Now, Jesus said here, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall I wear? Take note of these things. Jesus said, take, don't worry, saying these things. He says, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? What am I going to live on? What am I, how am I going to be sheltered? That's exactly what he's saying. What am I going to live on? How am I going to be sheltered? He's saying, don't worry. I love the way old King James puts it. Let me show you. Old King James puts it this way. He says, Therefore, take no thought. I love that. Praise God. Now he says, take no thought. means take no thought. Don't think about it. That's what he says. Don't think about it. What does it mean to take thought? It means to consider and decide. He says, don't consider and decide. He says, take no thought. Say what will I eat? Now, these, these, now, why did he say take no thoughts? Say, remember, we say with our heart, same place we take thoughts. We say with our heart and we speak with our mouth. So, but here he's not talking about speaking necessarily. He's talking about saying, which is with your heart. So he says, take no thoughts, saying. Don't say it. That doesn't mean don't speak it. No, it's more important when you say something because you can speak one thing and say another thing. I've cited several times, you know, on this broadcast, do the examples of people you know who act in who who not not act, they are not acting in faith. They are um, confessing positively. You know, so they come to you and say, "Please, can I have um, some money because I'm very rich right now." Now you see, they are speaking, I'm very rich right now, but they are saying they are broke. And most times, when you try to play around with them, and say, what do you mean? If, you, if you're very rich, then spend your money. They go, don't you understand what I am saying? Now, what are you saying? You are speaking, I'm very rich right now. But then, but that's not what you are saying in your heart. And here's the point, and that's one thing to note. You want the person to understand what you are saying, not what you are speaking. See that now? So that's why your saying is very, very powerful. Jesus said you shall have whatsoever you say, not what you speak, what you say. So it is your duty to make sure your speaking aligns with your saying. That's when he says you will have it. That's, that's teaching on the principles of faith now. Praise God. But then, this is Jesus saying this. And he's saying it, and he's speaking it to his disciples. So he says, Take no thought, saying, What will I eat? Now, somebody may not speak those words to your hearing. Say, What will I eat? But then you see the actions, and that, that's the thing about what you say. You're saying what you're saying will reveal will be revealed in your day-to-day -day action about that activity. You see that now? So when you come and say, I'm very rich right now. This can you give me some money? Now, what is your activity? Your activity is that you left where you are and came over to beg for some money. That's your activity. But then you are speaking as you're speaking. I'm very rich, but your activity, which is now begging or asking in this manner, is reflecting what you are saying in your heart. Now, this is how people confuse their lives. See that now? He said, hmm, hmm. Pastor, do you know what happened to me last week? I said, what happened? Hmm. My enemy almost died. And I said, oh, really? And then you go, yes, hmm, my enemy suffered sickness. Like, yeah. And then when they see that you're not getting what they're saying, oh, what, don't you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to understand. I said my enemy was sick. I, my enemy almost died. 
your enemy almost died. Is it that you're monitoring your enemy? Oh, don't you get it? Get it now. Whoa, you see, now <laughs> you are you are speaking and you want someone else to get what you are saying. But what you're saying, so now what you're doing, you know, people think that is positive confession, but it's not. It's not because you are actually saying you were sick. You're actually saying you almost died. You are saying it. So there's no point twisting the words coming out of your mouth. You can say it as it is. And there's nothing wrong with it. Praise God. It's even a testimony. Say, if you say, oh, I was sick yesterday. I was sick last week. There is no problem to that. You see, if you want to do faith confession, then you say what Jesus has said. And that's how it works. But you are not saying what Jesus has said. You are trying not to speak what the situation is. So you are rather trying to, with your words, deny the facts of the matter. See that now? And that's not faith. See that? So now you want to translate that. You, 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 you better just say, hey, I fell sick last week, but thank God for the healing power of God. Because by his stripes, I was healed and I maintained my healing and I received it in my body. See that now? If you really believe the word of God, it will show in your action. But if you're already begging and then saying or speaking, I am very rich, then you don't even believe what God has said. And that's the truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now, here's Jesus saying, don't take any thoughts saying, what will I eat? Think about this statement very closely. This is something you meditate on. You know, sometimes, what do you meditate on? You see, because the power, I told you early in this book, earlier on, several weeks ago, I told you this. I said, hey, the power of every word and command Jesus has given, it's in the Holy Spirit. So when we hear his words, instead of arguing with or trying to um, say what he didn't say, you, you instead should, should go before the Lord and say, Lord, how is it possible not to take thought for my life? How is it possible not to take thought about what to eat, what to drink or what to wear? How is it possible? Then the Holy Spirit, who God has sent to us to guide us into all truth, will begin to guide you in ways that you will flow and then you become a testimony of what Jesus has said. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So when we meditate on the word like this, now this is the light. This is the light. So in God's light, you are not supposed to take thought. You are not supposed to think about what you're going to wear. You're not supposed to think, talk, think, think about what you're going to eat. You're not supposed to think about what you're going to drink. Why does he want you to starve? No, because he has he has supplied all these things already. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. See, next month, I want you to prepare for this. I'm telling you from now, because the Lord has given, given this word in my heart. Next month, prepare for unusual teachings that we're going to be giving. Some practical things that we're going to be talking about. You see, if we don't as, as God's children, if we don't deeply meditate on these things, if we don't seriously follow his word, then we go nowhere. We won't go anywhere. We'll just be rigmaroling in circles and, and this has been for so long. You know, sometimes you, you want to think about it. Where are we going as a church? Where are we advancing to? How well have we grown? Or are we just recycling messages? See, message we, we preached 20 years ago uh, is still message we're preaching today without no fresh understanding. That's not the word of God. 
The Word of God is one. But as time goes on, there are fresh understanding that comes. You see, the Word of God is not, uh, it's not increasing or it's not renewing, no. But we are the ones, as we grow in understanding, we look at that word again and we're like, oh, 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 oh. I didn't get all that was in this word. Now, this was five years later. Ten years later, you look at that same word again and say, whoa, whoa. I thought I've seen this, but I just realized I didn't really read it. <laughs> Praise God. And then you wait again after some time, you look at it again. Now, what's going on? It is your understanding that is being renewed. It's not the word of God that is changing. Now, if our understanding of the word 10 years ago is still the same thing that it is now, then something is wrong. It means we have not grown. You see that now? So, when we go back to all these teachings that have been taught us, the message is the same, but then the understanding begins to increase. And as the understanding is increasing, our minds are being renewed. Yeah, our minds are being renewed. Then we use scriptures, because now your understanding of this scripture today, after a while, your understanding of it increases. Then you, from this scripture, you begin to look at other scriptures. I like, whoa, now I understand this better. Now that's the work the Holy Spirit is doing in us. But when we don't allow Him to expose our hearts, expose our minds to every word that Jesus has spoken, we will not know, see, because he enables us to keep his commands. And John told us his commands are not grievous. So here is a command that Jesus has given. Take no thought for your life. Say, what will I eat? What will I drink? Or what will I put on? It's a command. It's not an advice. It's a command. Meaning if you do this, you are sinning against Jesus Christ. But then you look at this and say, okay, I'm not going to take thoughts. I'm not going to worry. Mm. Mm. But you find yourself doing the same thing. You find yourself worrying about it. Praise God. You find yourself taking thoughts. And you say, I'm not going to go. How, how are we going to do this? Over? You've started taking thoughts. You have. But then we need to go back to the Holy Spirit to begin to ask him, okay, wait. Why did Jesus make this statement like this? Holy Spirit, why did Jesus say this? Is there something we need to understand? Now, when we ask that, then the Holy Spirit will begin to bring understanding and revelations to our hearts to understand what Jesus has said. And with that comes the power and ability to do what he has said. And that power make, will make us a testimony to prove as proof. Testimony simply means proof. Proof produces that what Jesus said was true. And my time is up. Praise God. I pray for you today. That God will place your portion before you. And I pray that he will give you steps that will bring you into the place of your portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the hand of God rest upon you for good. And let his countenance be bright on you. Let him cause you to have a fulfilling day. Let miracles take place in your life today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.